This is the 4.13 unit test read aloud. Directions. Read the poems and answer the questions to the best of your ability. Poem 1. The Tiger by William Blake. The Tiger by William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what heart could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what a dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Question 1. The archetypal image of fire is used frequently in this poem. This archetype represents power. Which statement best explains how this archetype creates meaning in the poem? A. This archetype develops the idea that power is both dangerous and violent and should be feared. B. The image of fire reinforces the idea that power is beautiful and enticing. C. By uniting the image of a tiger with that of fire, Blake shows readers that powerful beings should not be feared, but should be celebrated. Question 2. Read this line from the poem. Did he who made the lamb make thee? How does introducing the archetype of the lamb affect the meaning in this poem? A. The image of the lamb increases the menace of the poem. B. The image of the lamb contrasts with the fierceness of the tiger. C. The image of the lamb creates suspense. Question 3. Read these lines from the poem. In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? The distant deeps or skies allude to heaven or hell. I'm sorry, to hell or heaven. How does the allusion affect the meaning of this poem? A. The speaker wonders if the tiger is good or evil. B. The speaker believes that the tiger is a monster sent to destroy him. C. The illusion reveals the speaker's resentment regarding beliefs and rituals. Question 4. Which alliterative, alliterative phrase best conveys a mood of fear? A. Burning bright. B. What wings. C. Dare is deadly. Question 5. What effect does the punctuation of the poem have on its meaning? A. Each line ends in a period, making each a statement about the human soul. B. Many questions make the poem an inquiry about the mysterious tiger. C. Many lines contain commas, making the poem about the speaker's frustration. Poem 2. I wandered lonely as a cloud 
by William Wordsworth. I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er veils and hues when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of the bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Question six. How does the meaning of the last stanza relate to the meaning of the whole poem? A. It tells readers that the speaker loves to be around happy people. B. It connects the spirit of the speaker with that of the daffodils. C. It describes a new scene in a natural setting. Question 7. How does the rhythm in each line contribute to the sound of the whole poem? A. The regular rhythm adds a musical sound to the whole poem. B. The irregular rhythm adds a rough and halting sound to the whole poem. C. The rhythm varies from line to line, thus making the whole poem sound choppy. Question 8. How does the rhyme pattern in each stanza relate to the rhyme pattern in the whole poem? A. It repeats itself in every stanza. B. It is different in every stanza. C. It alternates between stanzas. Question 9. Which lines from the poem best shape the theme that the memory of something beautiful can bring lasting joy? A. When all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils. B. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. C. They flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. Question 10. How does the image of the daffodils as stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. Create a tone that conveys the theme that the memory of something beautiful can bring lasting joy. A. The image creates an admiring tone that helps readers understand why the speaker seeks to recall the happiness he felt. B. The image creates a baffled tone that suggests the deep mystery that the speaker feels over what he's seen. C. The image creates a concerned tone that suggests the environment produces fear in the speaker. Question 11. How does the image of daffodils dancing in the breeze create a mood that helps convey the theme that experiencing the beauty of the natural world is a path to happiness? A. 
It creates a dreary mood that helps readers see how difficult it can be to act in such a carefree, carefree manner. B. It creates a cheerful mood that helps readers understand how the natural world can inspire feelings of joy. C. It creates a frightening, frightened mood by demonstrating how the speaker is affected by what he sees. Question 12. Read this line from the poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud. What is the meaning of the simile? A. The speaker dislikes heights. B. The speaker looks down on others. C. The speaker feels alone. Question 13. What does the personification in the lines, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, describe? A. The twinkling of the stars in the sky. B. The movement of the clouds overhead. C. The movement of the daffodils. Question 14. How does the personification in the lines, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, create meaning? A. It emphasizes the speaker's anxiety and uncertainty. B. It expresses the joy and amazement that the speaker feels. C. It reflects the speaker's alienation from people. Poem 3. Fern Hill by Dylan Thomas. Fern Hill by Dylan Thomas. Now as I was young and easy under the apple boughs about the lilting house, and happy as the grass was green, the night above the dingle starry, time let me hail and climb, golden in the heydays of his eyes. And honoured among wagons, I was prince of the apple towns. And once below a time, I lordly had the trees and leaves trail with daisies and barley down the rivers of the windfall light. And as I was green and carefree, famous among the barns, about the happy yard, and singing as the farm was home, in the sun that is young once only. Time let me play and be golden in the mercy of his means. And green and golden, I was huntsman and herdsman. The calves sang to my horn, the foxes on the hills barked clear and cold. And the Sabbath rang slowly in the pebbles of the holy streams. All the sun long it was running, it was lovely. The hay fields high as the house, the tunes from the chimneys. It was air and playing, lovely and watery and fire green as grass. And nightly, under the simple stars, as I rode to sleep, the owls were bearing the farm away. All the moon long I heard, blessed among stables, the night jars flying with the ricks, and the horses flashing into the dark. And then to awake, and the farm like a wanderer white with the dew, come back, the cock on his shoulder. It was all shining, it was Adam and Maiden. The sky gathered again, and the sun grew round that very day. So it must have been after the birth of the simple light in the first spinning place, the spellbound horses walking warm out of the whinnying green stable onto the fields of praise. And honoured among foxes and pheasants by the gay house under the new-made clouds, and happy as the heart was long in the sun born over and over, I ran my heedless ways. My wishes raced through the house-high hay, and nothing I cared at my sky-blue trades 
that time allows in all his tuneful turning so few and such morning songs before the children green and golden follow him out of grace nothing i cared in the lamb white days that time would take me up to the swallow thronged loft by the shadow of my hand in the moon that is always rising nor that riding to sleep i should hear him fly with the high fields and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land oh as i was young and easy in the mercy of his means time held me green and dying though i sang in my chains like the sea Question 15. Read these lines from the poem. And nothing I cared at my sky blue trades that time allows. In all his tuneful tur turning, so few and such morning songs. How does this imagery affect the poem? A. It describes a boy singing in the bright morning. B. It creates a sense of everlasting summer. C. It points out that childhood is short-lived. Question 16. Which alliterative phrase from the poem creates a peaceful mood? A. About the lilting house and happy as the grass was green. B. And nightly under the simple stars. C sang to my horn the foxes on the hills barked clear and cold question 17 reread these lines from the poem and honored among foxes and pheasants by the gay house under the new made clouds and happy as the heart was long in the sun born over and over i ran my heedless ways how do these lines reflect the theme that it is foolish to think the carefree days of youth can last? A. They describe the speaker as being the master of his own childhood and happiness. B. They detail the aspects of childhood the speaker enjoyed day after day. C. They explain how unaware the speaker is that the innocence of childhood is fleeting. And finally, your question 11, uh, 18, for nine points, I have tried my best on this test and would like some completion points, yes or no. Good luck.